Hey guys, welcome back to Maison Molly. I'm Ash Molly, and today we are finally getting to a Louis Vuitton tell all. You asked all the questions, I've got all the answers. Today I'm spilling all of the Louis Vuitton tea and answering the question of where do I work now? Come along. Of course guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. You guys can always find me over on Instagram where I make daily videos. If that's something you're interested in, you can find me right here. Let's answer all of those LV questions. Alrighty guys, so I've got my iced coffee, I've got my phone, and I'm ready to go. Last week here on YouTube, under my community tab, on that post I requested that you guys share with me any Louis Vuitton questions that you may have as I would be doing this video, a Louis Vuitton tell all. I must say, thank you guys so much for submitting all of your questions. I have so many questions between here on YouTube and on Instagram, so I'm actually thinking about doing this video in two parts. We'll answer all the questions that we can today, so if you didn't get the opportunity to submit your question, you can still go ahead on my community tab and share your question with me in hopes for it being featured in part two of this video. Alrighty, so the first question I have is from Jovi. Thank you, Jovi. Jovi's question says, does LV hold merchandise, especially monogram unicorn pieces before a price increase? I can say they really do not. Um, they let us know when the price increases are gonna be, and honestly, if we're cool enough with our clients, we'll probably contact you and be like, hey, just so you know, there's gonna be a price increase, so if you want this item, you should come in and get it. It's not really a practice to hold the pieces in order to get more money for it at a later date. Second part to her question was, do essays get upset if you just want to go see the items and not buy? Would you just recommend to shop online in order to actually see the item without being judged or pressured to get something? So first part of her question, do essays get upset if you just go to look at items and not buy? Not really, but you do have to be conservative about it. I always say think of it like this is someone's livelihood and especially at Louis Vuitton, the, the associates aren't making a lot on commission, so it's really about getting those sales in. So I would be conservative with their time. Um, I know when I worked there, I didn't have a problem showing anybody anything, but if you know that you don't have the intention to buy, maybe not stay for like an hour looking at bags and then just be like, okay, thanks, bye. You know, go in 10, 15 minutes, ask for the styles that you want to see, try them on. I truly think that no one will be annoyed by that. We're typically used to people coming in, trying things on and not always buying. Every client isn't going to buy. Um, so don't feel intimidated about going in to try on. Just do be conscious of their time. The second part was, would you just recommend to shop online in order to actually see the items without being judged or pressured to get something? I would say a good idea is pre-shop online. So go online, see the styles that you like, write them down so that when you go in, it's not like, because going in can be quite overwhelming. The bags are all displayed on the wall. There's so many to look at. So I think if you look online, get, you know, three, four, five bags that you want to see, go in and say, hey, I would like to see the Neverfull, the Speedy, so on and so forth. If you seem organized, you know what it is that you want to see, they would be more than happy to share it with you. I think that online can be a little sketch only because if you've never seen the pieces, once you get it, you may not like it, then you have to return and then it's this whole debacle. So I always say pre-shop online, go with a couple that you love and try it out in store. And then the third part of your question, why are all of most LV essays quitting? As an LV essay who quit, I feel qualified to answer that question. Ugh, I mean, it's just not a great brand to work for. It's sad because it's the biggest luxury brand out there. LVMH made something of 40 something billion dollars last year and they're giving their advisors a dollar for a never full. So I just don't think that they value the advisor's time, the advisor's um, quality of life, the advisor's livelihood. And people are realizing that and moving on to these other luxury brands which may not be as prestigious as Louis Vuitton but are definitely paying way better than they are. This next question is from CM319. She says, are bags made in the US of lesser quality than ones made in Italy, Spain, or France? So 
No, they are not. And this is one of my biggest pet peeves while I was there because clients would come in requesting these made in France bags. And I'm like, honey, we don't got it. Louis Vuitton is such a big conglomerate that in the US, there's a workshop here. In France, there's a workshop there. In Italy, there's a workshop there. A lot of countries now have their own workshops. The artisans are all trained in France. Um, they're all trained the same way. The materials are imported from France. So the quality is the same across the board. So I'm telling you now as an ex Louis Vuitton client advisor, where the bag is made does not matter. There's plenty of times I've had clients come in with bags that they bought while they were in Europe and there were the same problems. They were cracking, they were fraying, broken zippers. The problems are the same across the board because the canvas that LV is using is the same across the board. Alrighty, the next question is gonna be from Danny. Danny says, hi Ashmali, what does LV do with items returned due to a quality issue? Example, crooked stitching, crooked zip. Do they resell them to another customer? So if an item is deemed defective, so there's something visibly wrong with it, we defect the bag out. We put it in the system as a defective bag and it gets sent back to the warehouse. I know you guys have heard this. Some bags actually do get burnt it's sad to say but they do um but no lv is not selling these bags back to clients so for example there's never been a time in the seven years that i worked there where we took back a bag that had like a crooked zipper and put it back in the drawer to sell it to another person like no that doesn't happen i will say though that no shade to all of y'all but some clients are a little paranoid and they will bring a bag in and say do you like right there right there do you see that i don't know spot and i'm looking and i'm like mm, i don't we will return that bag we will return it under a regular you know code and then we're gonna put it back in the drawer because there's sincerely nothing wrong with it and of course that's if the bag is new and the client has never used it so on and so forth but if there is actually something wrong with the piece even if it's not used yet or clients have used it for a little while we will defect it out and send it back Castigia has a question that kind of piggybacks off of the last one. She says, what does the brand do with items that never sell since it doesn't go on sale or anything? So it's a dream. Pieces that don't sell. So these are usually like seasonal items, um, shoes from last season, things of that nature. They go to an employee website. So there is an employee website where employees can log on they can browse the site it's just like shopping at like Saks or neiman's <laughs> and the discount is significant so it used to be better over the years but i would say things are like 80 ish percent off so i have bought for example i'll give you guys a good example my green neverfull i actually got it on that site since it was a seasonal color that neverfull was about two thousand dollars i got it for six hundred dollars so it's quite a steal and it's one of the very few things i miss about working at louis vuitton next question is from my friend Adam. he says is it possible to source a luggage tag without having a luggage piece is it also possible for lv to repair costume fine jewelry so okay in regards to the luggage tag, quite some time ago, yes, Louis Vuitton would just let you buy a luggage tag as a spare part. But of course, as any system, people started to abuse it. And so there were never any luggage spare parts anymore. This created the problem for clients who actually had the piece. So for example, someone who actually has a key ball on their profile, they would come in and say, hey, I've lost my luggage tag for my key ball. May I have another one? And we would not have them. And they would be sold out for months because so many people were buying them to put them on their Neverfulls or their Speedy. So Louis Vuitton made a rule that if someone wanted a luggage tag, they had to have that piece under their profile. So if you came in and asked for a luggage tag, I would then have to look at your profile and make sure that you actually have a piece that has a luggage tag, such as a key ball. If you do not, then unfortunately, we would no longer be able to sell you that luggage tag similar question from Lori does LV sell the pouch for the Neverfulls separately no they do not if you do not have a Neverfull so if you have a Neverfull and you go and you say hey I lost my pouch for my Neverfull yes they will sell you a replacement part for it but if you do not have a Neverfull under your profile then they will not do so 
All right, so this is a really good question. It's from Melanie. And it says, does LV red flag you if you return online returns to the boutique? Or if you buy in the store and discover at home this handbag is the wrong slash color style for you? What is considered excessive? Whew. Okay, so, uh, no, they do not red flag it. Um, LV does allow returns of online purchases to in-store. They try to make it as convenient for the clients as possible, so you never have to worry about that. Don't worry about that. Um, the problem is when it becomes excessive. So if you're constantly buying something on the website, the next day taking it back, buying another thing on the website, the next day taking it back, there are clients who I've seen with like five, six, seven, eight, nine returns in one month from what they've gotten online. So at that point, the store leadership might make a um, decision and say, you know what, we've noticed that you've been buying a lot online and none of these pieces have been working out for you. So we invite you to instead come in, try it on, see how you like it, so on and so forth. Or they might give you an alternate option and say, we can offer to send this back to the website for you. Because keep in mind, the store is taking the hit for these purchases that you're making online. And it always sucks because like sometimes we wouldn't make our day because we'd have so many online returns, which is completely out of our control, you know? And then that messes with the bonuses, the commissions. It's it's a whole it's a whole thing. So um yes, try to be conservative with your online returns. Uh Mary asks, what is your opinion of this Beauty B25 and on prompt leather? Um, I love anything in leather. I think that this Beauty B uh, 25, it's beautiful. It's such a cute bag, and especially in leather, it stands out because it's different. So if you're considering that, I say it's a good choice. Alrighty, so Jazz wants to know, can client advisors tell the difference from actual LV and a replica bag? <sighs> this one's in the air. I mean, they don't give training to determine if a bag is real or fake. Um, I worked there for seven years, so for the most part, I could instantly tell. I think it's just something that comes with experience because you're constantly showing these bags every single day. So when one comes in that may not be real, you can kind of instantly tell. However, in my seven years, I did get duped once. The person brought the bag in for repair. It looked authentic to me. I filled out the paperwork for the repair and I sent it out to after sales services repair. Maybe a week or two later, they sent back a note saying that this was not, not an authentic piece and they wouldn't be able to repair it. And can I tell you, I was so shocked. Like, I couldn't believe that got past me. So of course we had to call that client in and give them their bag back. Now, this is a really sticky situation because we're not allowed to tell people that their bag is fake, right? So whenever clients would come in for a repair or anything like that and their bag wasn't real, we would discreetly take them to the side because, you know, you don't really want to embarrass anyone and you don't know what their situation is. And we would say, so I'm sorry to inform you, but this bag is not a part of our collection. And some people would look at us like, what does that mean? And you would just repeat it over and over again, like, I'm so sorry, the bag is not a part of our collection. And if they're not getting it, then you would say, let me pull out the same bag and show it to you. So if it's like a Neverfull, you would go get another Neverfull and give it to them and like have them compare it and see like how obviously it wasn't real. Um, but that was always difficult. Um, yeah. Once I had this lady bring in a Neverfull that she got, and her mother-in-law told her that she had bought it in Paris for her. And it was fake. Um, I feel like we could do a whole story time on the crazy stories I have from Louis Vuitton. But yes, to sum up the answer to that question, we can mostly tell if it's fake. If it happens to slip by us, though, it does go back to workshop and they definitely can tell if it's fake or not. So... Pro tip as well, if you've got a bag and you don't know if it's fake or not, just go in and say you want to get a repair and they kind of like have to tell you that it's fake. You know what I mean? If you just go in and you say, hey, is my bag real or fake? They'll say, we're so sorry, we don't authenticate and they'll leave it at that. But if you say you want to repair it, they don't want to take it in for repair because they know it's not real. So that's when they'll tell you it's not a part of the collection. All right, we're moving along. My iced coffee is almost done. 
to the last question for this video. I get it all the time. I'm going to answer this exactly how the person wrote it. So this question is from Hillary and she says, not totally related, but really interested to know where you work now. If you're still in the luxury world, how does it compare to working at LV? So I just can't tell you guys where I work. <laughs> Um, for quite a few reasons. One, my job has a lot of rules around social media and I actually love my new job guys. Um, and so I don't want to break the rules and two, I want to be respectful and three, honestly, I think it's better this way because I feel as though if I told you guys where I worked now and I'm still talking about LV, it would be a complete uh, conflict of interest. So I won't say where I work, but if I can give you guys a few hints, um, it's definitely top tier luxury. So yes, I am still in luxury retail. I always sell clients, think Louis Vuitton, but way better, right? Um, so it's really exciting. It's been like 10 months now. It's been a great journey. I'm learning so much. I love the people that I work with. I love the team. I love management. I think that I finally gotten all the things that I wanted. So I've told you guys before that three things are important to me. Um, quality of life, compensation, and great leadership. And I can honestly say that I have all three now. So it's truly really a blessing. Now, I know I've been talking a lot because the video just actually cut short because I've been going for 30 minutes. But to wrap up the answer to that question, how does it compare to LV? LV does not compare to my current job. Um, I just didn't feel valued when I was there. It was a lot of stress, um, not a lot of respect. I had a director that literally cursed at us, like, F you curse at us. And it was a lot to take in. And now that I've been gone for 10 months, it's reinforced every single day that I was in a toxic work environment. And so I'm just so thankful, like I said, for the team that I have now. Um, my work environment, my work-life balance. Um, it's really been a phenomenal journey. So guys, there you have it. I've answered quite a bit of your Louis Vuitton questions. Remember, you can drop it in the comments down below. Um, any other questions that you may have, I'm thinking about doing a part two to this video depending on how this one goes, if you guys liked it. So yeah, that's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you guys always so much for hanging out with me. If you found value in this video, go ahead and subscribe. I do have a lot of really great LV content out there that I want to share with you. Guys, thank you for stopping by Maison Molly, and I'll see you guys next time.